All right. Praise the Lord. I'm Jumbo. Say, I am alive. I am awake. Are you happy? Are you happy Jesus gave you life? Are you happy no one killed you? Are you happy nothing bad happened to you that you're here today? I'm very happy myself. Can we, thank, can we thank God for a minute and say, thank you, Lord? Can you say hallelujah and let's thank God for a minute? Come on, let's do it. Wow. <laughs> Lift your hands and say, Lord Jesus, touch me today in a powerful way. I'm ready to be empowered to live a great life. You notice I didn't say I'm ready to be blessed. I'm not going to tell you that in this message. Because you can't be lazy and be a kingdom builder. Many people just want to be blessed. Say, oh, God bless me. Give me a blessing. How are you? I'm blessed. No? Show me how blessed you are. You have to have proof that you're doing things seriously, and then God will begin to honor you. Without action, there's no attraction. Have you ever heard that? It's a good quote. I like it. Today I want to speak about this title. The Lord just gave it to me five minutes ago. Because I preach by the Holy Ghost. Every day is a fresh word. I don't have notes from 10 years ago, and I say, well, let me do that one. Everything is fresh from the, from the, from the boss. How many know who the boss is? Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Say hallelujah, boss. Let's give him a salute. He's the commander of the armies. You're scared of your commander-in-chief, but you're not scared of God. What's wrong with you? Praise the Lord. What's wrong with people? They fear men, they revere men, but they don't revere God or his servants. Now, I know, I know there are a lot of servants that are jo joking around with the gospel. I know. But not me and not a lot of other people. So we have to command respect. Because of the serious position we've taken to serve God. Today I'm speaking on this title. And I love it. I, actually, I absolutely am grateful to God that he spoke this to me. I heard the voice of God a few moments ago outside. He said, speak on this. Be a visionary. The visionary I've ordained you to be and command the things you want. Someone say praise the Lord. The Lord is looking for people that are going to rise to the occasion to work for him. When you get serious about the Father's work, you're going to cause... You're going to cause things to go into motion for yourself. Instead of standing there saying, Lord, I need your help. Oh, God, help me. Oh, Lord, bless me. God says, I love you. You're my child. <laughs> right, Mom? He, we're his children, yes? Yeah, he loves us, yes? He's going to be merciful to us. He'll want to see that we have food to eat and some ability to live. Of course. But that's not being blessed. To be blessed means to empower. Bless is an increased word. Curse is a decreased word. You're going to get blessed today. Lift your hands and thank God for you that you're in this service. You were smart to come. I'm telling you, the Lord's going to speak to us here. The Father is 
the author of curses and bless, blessings and curses. Now, some people try to use it in the demonic realm to curse people or curse at people. That's evil. But to be blessed means to be empowered to prosper and succeed. To be cursed means to be empowered to fail and to decrease. Many people are decreasing because there's curses moving in their life. And I want to teach for just a couple of minutes before I get into the other flow. You, you, have, to, you have to begin to really look at everything around you and deal with it. Everybody go like this, like you're a ninja man, or a ninja, you're a kung fu fighter. Say, I'm going to, come on, hallelujah. <laughs> you say, I'm going to deal with this stuff. Oh, yes. Hey, mom, I see you doing, she's going like this. Woo! Someone doing like this, she's going like this. I like it. <laughs> see, the other people, you can't see everybody. I can see all of you, but you can't see each other. I can see the whole thing. Say, I'm going to deal with things. The Lord says, and this is the word of the Lord today. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. Be the visionary I've ordained you to be. Someone say, I will. Someone say, I can. Someone said, I really must. I have to do it to please my father. And guess what? What? Guess what? Say what? Guess what? Other ear. Guess what? Thank you. When you do these things, that's how your life gets blessed. When you give, you'll receive. When you obey God, when you work, you get paid. When you command, you'll get results. It's a very sad situation for a person that says they're a child of God. To just allow life to deal with you the way it wants. Because evil people are also there. And the devil's also there. And there's situations around that you don't want to see or have. But God has a, uh, uh, God has a huge plan for you. Lift your hands and say, Lord, your plan for me is so big, I don't know what to say. Now, I've been saying in these meetings that let, I'm praying prophetically for everybody listening that you would hear God and let him direct you on what exactly he wants you to be doing now. Guess what? I said, guess what? You can only do what you see. You can only do what you see. If you don't see it, you can't do it. If you don't have God's direction, you can't, you can't do it. If it's not in your mind and your plan, how can you execute it? How can you administrate it? How can you activate it? How can you do it? You can't. And this is very sad. Lift your hands up right now and let's pray. Father, thank you that you're going to show me everything I must be doing. And I'll not waste your time or my time or anyone's time. I'm going to cause everything to go into motion and I'm going to work in obedience to what you want. In Jesus' name. And Father, every cloud over my vision, take it away. Everything that's wrong in my environment, take it out. Every wrong person that's near me, take them away from me. And bring the right people, the right situations, the right friends, the right resources, everything good for me that I can fulfill your mighty plan of action. In Jesus' name. Again, without action, there's no attraction. When people see, when people see you're serious, and God sees you're serious, things will begin to happen for you. Lift your hands and say, I got to get serious. Put your hand up to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going to prove myself to you, I promise. 
See, this is really what church is for. Church is for a place of training for reigning. It's a place to teach people how to live. If you can't be successful in your life and your mission and your life calling, you haven't done anything. You haven't really lived. My, my friend who's in heaven now, Dr. Miles Monroe said, he said, it's sad that some people are still alive, but they're already, it's like they're already dead. They're walking, but they're not living. Because they're not living according to the plan that God has. He said, what's, and he also said, what's the richest place in the world? He, he said, the graveyard. Because down there, buried are people that have un, unfulfilled dreams and goals and businesses and enterprises and industries and, and, and all kinds of things that haven't been done yet. And they'll never get done because now the person is gone. What a sad affair. I pray over everybody good that this, that this will never happen to you. And it's better to start when you're young. Bishop just said to me outside very nicely, he said, I wish we met before. I wish we met a long time ago. Because you could have been doing, we could have been doing so much together in the ministry. And the only thing I could say was, let's do it now. <laughs> because we can't go back there. Yeah? Whatever happened up to one minute ago, you can't do anything about it. The only thing you could do is change things from the now into the next day. That's the only thing you have to do. Lift your hand to the Lord and say, I'm going to get busy. I'm going to get busy about your business, Lord. Now you want to get out of lack and low living and all that, you'll get promoted as you show God you're serious. Solomon said in the book of Proverbs, see a man diligent in his business, this one will stand before great people, not just common people. Solomon also said when you, well, how you think is how you'll be. Joshua 1.8 said, when you meditate in the word of God, you'll make your own way prosperous. And then you'll have good success. And the Lord said in Isaiah 48.17, he said, I am the Lord your God who teaches you how to profit and leads you in the way you should go. Matthew 11.12 says, the kingdom of heaven permits aggression and the aggressive take it by force. Proverbs 29.18 says, without a vision, people perish. The word perish means to slowly waste away and fall off, or it means you could just drop down and die, both. It can mean either one. Someone say, I'm not going to perish, I'm going to live. I'm going to live and do the works of God. I will not die before the Lord comes back. I'll live to be so old, I won't know if I want to stay or go. Come on, lift your hands, prophesy. You got to command what you want. See, some people die because they... People die because they spoke badly about themselves and they never declared these things. I have to explain to you, a central part of this whole revelation and this message is words have power. Someone shout, words have power. Say, my words have power. So when I speak, it will come to pass. Do you believe that? So you want to speak things into existence of what you need and want. Don't let life do things to you. You do things to life. <laughs> Don't let the devil do anything to you. Do things to the devil and his ugly friends. The devil has friends, very ugly friends. Nasty people. You have no business being with them. Lift your hands and say, Lord, take me out of every situation where I'm with the wrong people. 
Evil people can't be with me because I'm your son. I'm your king. If you're a daughter, say you're his queen. Tell the Lord right now. Say, I am your. Your lady, say you're his. Yeah, thank you. Does a queen live in a nasty, ugly, filthy place? Or does she live in a palace? So what's up with us? What happened? Look at your neighbor and say, what happened? Ask him, what happened? How do you say that in Swahili? Mom, tell me, how do you say that in Swahili? What happened? What? Ah, it's too long. You know, English is what happened. Ask your neighbor, what happened? Talk in English. Someone said, my English is, uh, my English is not so good. It's beautiful. The king was here. The queen was here. You speak English. Don't tell me you don't speak English. I know you do. How many understand me? Yeah, how many understand me? Oh, yeah. All right. So the Lord is, is asking us what happened along the way that made you so uh, living in a realm that's below your standard, below the standard of God. If you could see how God wants us to live in, from his own mind, you'd be shocked. And none of us are living to that level. He wants us to own property. Hello? He wants us to own our own houses. He wants us to own our own buildings. He wants us to own our own businesses. He wants us to own everything. Lift your hands and say, I'm the owner of everything. Why? Because I'm on the earth. The dominion principle is, he said, you take dominion over everything. The Lord is, is saying, and this is the word of the Lord, this is a prophecy for the body of Christ, I want you to be my visionary, to do what it is I've ordained you to do, and I want you to command things into motion for what you need and want. It would be a long title, but that's what I would call it. Lift your hand and say, yes, I received the prophecy. This is the prophecy. The Lord spoke to me right here before I walked in. As I was walking, I heard the voice of the Lord. Almighty God, Jehovah, sitting in the third heaven on his throne by the Holy Ghost here on earth, spoke to me audibly and said, son, this thing. And I had the revelation of it when I was on the way here. And then I heard the voice of God say, this is it. Be the visionary. Tell the people, be the visionary I have ordained you to be. Someone say, I will. And command what you need and want to be so. Don't let things happen to you. Don't let people mistreat you. Don't let things go any old way. Stand in the order of making your life an organized place. I, I want to tell you who God promotes. He promotes good managers. You could read the Bible, fast and pray, and sing songs. That's wonderful to do those four things. But if you can manage the vision well of what God's given, he'll, he'll promote you to new level, 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 level. You'll go up, up, up. And the Bible says we need to go from faith to faith, from glory to glory, which means to climb higher all the time. So a king, when God calls us kings in the Bible, he calls us lords, he calls us royalty, right? He calls us his own offspring. We were made in his own image after his own likeness. And he, God said, I want you to have dominion over everything. So what are we doing with that? People don't take it seriously. Whoever says go here, you go there. That's why you need to have brilliant people around you. Not just people that are okay, but you need people that are powerful and brilliant. Lift your hands and say, I received them. And say, Lord, I, Lord, please clear the clutter from my life. Pray, pray. And say, Lord, take the wrong people away from me. People that are blocking the flow, blocking the vision, wasting time. They have no ideas. When you're a busy man like I am, 
you, you're busy, you're focused on many things that you're doing. So you need other people around you that are brilliant. You're not supposed to do everything yourself, nor think of everything yourself. You're supposed to have a brilliant team of friends and family and operatives and workers and associates and fellow servants. Yeah. You're supposed to have all that. Lift your hands, say, I receive. So somebody that's brilliant just sends you like a message with an idea. And you're like, wow, thank you. You thought of that. I didn't, I didn't ask you to think of that. You brought it to the table. Wonderful, thank you. That's a good person. That's a great person. That's a right person. And some people never think of anything. There's people... <laughs> There's a, there's a formula of three kinds of people. That it's an old joke, but motivational speakers used to speak. And I'm a prophet and a man of God, anointed by the Holy Ghost, so I don't consider myself merely a motivational speaker. But, uh, you know, the others in that world, they have said this. They say there are some people that, that watch what happens around there are some people that make things happen. That's the highest level of a person. And there's people that wonder what's happening. They don't know. You need to deduct the two and take the one, the people that make things happen. You need an environment of brilliant people that will help you succeed. Someone say, I received them. Yeah, because without it, what can you do? A man is no good by himself. That's why God gives a woman. And those that don't have a good woman, I feel bad for you. I feel bad for anybody because the, the scripture says in Genesis 2.18, it's not good for man to be alone. It also says in Proverbs 18.22, that when a man finds a wife, not a knife. When a man finds a wife, not strife. When a man finds a wife, he, he finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Special favor that you wouldn't get any other way comes from having the right person in your life. It's an amazing thing. And somebody was saying, like women, who said it? I think, was it yesterday? Somebody said, yeah, men, the five senses, it seems like men only operate in a few, but the women have an ability to see, they have abilities to see other things. That's a true statement. Women have a way to see into things. Why did God make man and woman? But the funny thing is that God took woman out of the man. The sixth rib, the extra one there, pulled it out, put Adam into a deep sleep, pulled it out. Amazing. Put his own hand through the skin, put, broke the bone, pulled the rib out, and created this woman. What a story. And uh, there she was. But the whole thing originally was in Adam... All of it was inside Adam. God made Adam perfect. But God knew that Adam would get overloaded with work. So he needed a help meet, someone to help him. Not to compete, not to waste time, but to complete and to help. Lift your hands if you say, Lord, I receive. Now, if you're still single, there's hope. If you're still single and not married, there's hope. And I pray that if you're already married... You know, God will touch the other person and you'll just get more brilliant along the way. Lift your hand and say, the Holy Spirit can do anything. <laughs> people are smiling. Look at you. You're all laughing now. I like it. Yeah, people can touch. God can touch people. The, the end of the matter of all of this, and even this prophecy, even this message, is that you get things done. Yeah. So you have to command things into existence for what you want. Say, I'm going to do it more from today. Say, Lord, anoint my tongue, anoint my speech, anoint my mind, anoint my heart. Anoint me to, uh, to flow and understand and speak things into existence. The, the power of the faith confession is amazing. When you speak to a mountain, Mark 11:23, it can absolutely be removed. 
when you pray, Mark, according to Mark 11, 24, believing you receive, you shall have. In John 15, 7, the Lord said, as you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll then ask for what you will and it'll be done for you. You notice Jesus didn't say, well, just whatever you think is okay. No, he said, as my words abide in you. What did Jesus do for three and a half years everywhere he went? He did miracles, he traveled around, he blessed people, he loved people, he healed people, people were healed and delivered and all that, but he taught people the principles of the kingdom. The church is a place that we need to uh, exemplify the kingdom. The kingdom is the whole picture that God has. And the church is the thing that's inside of the kingdom that will absolutely, um, you know, make that thing happen if we can have the right focus. Lift your hands and say the kingdom, the kingdom. Jesus only taught about the kingdom. That's all he did. Right? Did he teach people just have to have a religious church, a little place? Even in the book of Acts, look at the book of Acts, how powerful these men were. They had meetings in their houses, and the Holy Ghost came. And they had... <laughs> They had meetings in houses and the presence of God was so strong that they were, when they went out, they shook the whole city. And it was said of them, these men that have turned the world upside down have come here also. That's why the rulers and the magistrates were afraid of them and they tried to command them, don't preach anymore in this name because they knew the name was powerful. There's a few weapons of warfare that are very powerful. Number one is the word. What's in here? The word. And even the words of Jesus that the Holy Spirit can remind you of. And then the blood, the blood of Jesus, will chase every demon. You know what you shout at the devil? Say, the blood of Jesus. Every demon will disappear. That's worth a million dollars right there. You couldn't give me a big enough offering to tell you that principle if you didn't know it. Do you know how powerful that is? How many have ever felt a demon around somewhere? Come on, lift your hand. How many have ever felt a demon somewhere, somewhere in your... He tried to come to your house, around with people. You feel some demonic presence. Just speak the blood of Jesus. They can't handle it. One drop of the blood of Jesus is more powerful than all the hordes of hell. They can't stop. They, they can't handle the blood of Jesus because that's what whipped them completely. Every demon knows the power of the blood. So walk in and say, in the name of Jesus, devil, Go. He has to go. And then say, the blood of Jesus. Wow, they run. They run as in terror. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourself therefore unto God, and then resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The word flee means to run from as in terror. We give the devil too much credit. He's a fired ex-employee. He no more has any position. He has no future. He has no glory. He lost it all. Can I tell you, demons now, they're monstrous creatures. They're monsters. They're, they, they used to be beautiful angels. But when the Lord cursed them and cast them down, they were turned into these hideous, monstrous-looking creatures. I've, I've seen in the spirit I've seen them in the spirit. They don't look like the angels of God anymore. They've been transformed into horrible, horrible things. I'll prove it to you from the word. I'll prove it to you from the word. Are you ready? There's a scripture that says of, of the devil himself, people say, is this the one that deceived the nations? Why would they say that if he was beautiful? If he was still beautiful to look at, why would they say? 
Is this the one? Is this the one? That means he's been transformed into a hideous, ugly creature that looks like nobody, a nobody. So never give the devil credit. So the three weapons of war is the word. Write this down. The word, the blood, and the name. The authority in the name. We have the name of Jesus. Amen. Which is the most powerful name under heaven. And the Bible says that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's what we have. Are we using it? Now when you speak, you say things in the name of Jesus. When you want angels to help you, don't talk to angels. I don't see scripture for that. No. You talk to the Lord. Talk to the boss. They're his angels. But the Bible says they're ministering spirits for us, the heirs of salvation, which is us. And he said, command ye me the works of my hand in Isaiah 45, 11. This is so powerful. Isaiah 45, 11. Write it down. He says, concerning my sons, I'll show you things to come that I'm going to do. And the second part of the verse says, the second part of the verse says, Com concerning the works of my hands, you command me. When I first read that scripture, I said, oh my God, really? Really? You want me to tell you something, what you should do? But you're God. He said, yes, command me. That's one place in the scripture. Another place in the scripture is in Malachi 3. He said, when you give your tithe, when you pay your tithes, he said, now prove me now by this to see if I won't open up the windows of heaven. So when you take that action to pay your tithes, tithe, a tithe is not a gift. A tithe is a payment of the 10%. God said, I'll give you the hundred percent, but the ten percent of that belongs to me, not you. So when you keep it, you cause some degradation to happen in your life to the other ninety percent. But he said, give it to me, pay it to me, and I'll rebuke the devourer. So all these things that try to eat at your life and these demonic things that cause trouble, they'll be gone from you. And you'll save your money. It's really like an insurance. You're insuring your, your, your world. He said, I will rebuke the devourer. Then he said, I will open the windows of heaven. And I will pour you out a blessing that there's not room to receive it. Number four. Number five, I'll make you a delightsome land for me, says the Lord of hosts. Lift your hands and say, that's a good deal. We would be crazy not to take God up on that. See, there are things in the Word, my friends, that you must just understand and obey what the Bible says. You just do what the Scripture says. That's it. Someone say, that's it. Just do what He said and trust Him. We say we have faith, but do we really have faith? Do we trust Him? We're supposed to. But I'll tell you something. This thing about getting the vision and then walking according to the plan of action that God has and to begin to command everything to come into place. When you pray like that, somebody say, I'll begin to pray like that from today. You will have a testimony. If you have testimony services here, people will come to testify and say, you know what? This thing was a mess. I had a problem. It was like an obstacle, but all of a sudden it's gone. Why? Because you took your, your gift from the Father of your speech, your heart of faith, your mind of brilliance, and, and the Word of God, and the, and the declaration that the Holy Spirit would put in you and begin to speak to things. 
and they begin to happen. Another great example is when Jesus cursed the fig tree. The disciples must have thought, hey, Jesus, I, I, is, they must have said to each other, is Jesus okay? He's talking to trees now. But by utter amazement, when they came back along the way where the fig tree was, it had already withered and died. And one thing, we need to fear God. Hello? We need to fear God. <clears throat> Part of the attribute of the Holy Spirit helps us to fear God. You never want to disappoint God. Hello? You never want to disappoint God and His plan. No? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When you respect Jehovah and his principles, and even the purpose for why he gave you life to live, you begin to, you, you begin to see a, a, a new, a new high, a horizon, a new dawning of a new day, a new bright future. And God wants us to have that. Let's pray right now. Begin to pray right now over this, what I'm saying here. And say, Lord, please help me. That I can command the thing and it shall happen. I can speak the things. Jesus, I can speak the things. And they will obey. Another principle I learned is all things have ears. They may not have this physical ear. <laughs> like President Trump now, he, he has uh, a little bit less on the top, it's very sad. But uh, we're praying for him. By the way, the devil cannot get him. No, 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 no. God's hand is upon the man. And uh, we believe he'll be, he'll be elected, be re-elected. We believe it. So the, the Lord has given everything in creation the ability to hear. Everything can hear you. Creation, things, demons, People, angels, and Father God can hear you when you speak. You know something powerful? This is, this is powerful. When a nursing mother has a baby, when the baby begins to cry, they did a study and found out physiologically that when the baby's voice, the cry, gets to the mother's ears, the milk begins to flow. Can you imagine? If the baby's quiet, maybe everything stays oh, just okay. And the baby starts to go, wah, wah. The glands in the body respond to the baby's cry and the milk begins to flow. So the baby can come and have milk. Eat all of creation hears. The fig tree heard Jesus. And Jesus said something so powerful in the scripture. I love this. He said, he said, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. But for the sake of these, for my disciples, do something that, that, that they can see that you are with me. It went further. Remember one disciple said to Jesus, show us the Father. Jesus looked back at him and said, hmm, uh, when you see me, you've already seen him. I am the representation and embodiment of God on earth. Woo! I have something to tell you. Someone said, woo! Not you, them. I want to hear you. Hi, right, Jesus. Someone went, oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> come on, you ladies in Africa, you could go, woo, somebody give me one of those African, come on, somebody. <laughs> Thank, oh, wow, oh, yeah. oh, wow, now, now I know where I am. Okay, thank you, Asante Sala. God bless you, Ubarakiwe. The Lord 
went further, it went further and he said, as the Father sent me, so I send you in this world. So guess what? With a, uh, guess what? Guess what? We're the, representa we're the representation of God in the earth too now. We're here. Yeah, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. He's not here physically anymore. And it doesn't matter what's needed. Jesus will not come and stand here again until he comes to first catch his church away. And then we're there for some time. Then the Bible talks about the great tribulation, Armageddon, the judgment upon the wicked, all of that happening. And then the Lord will come back and set a new thing in motion and we'll have the millennial reign for a thousand years. So it's going to happen in this sequence. But Jesus just walking around ministering to people physically is not going to happen again until the millennial reign. Now if you study this out, you'll see the succession of eschatology, how this happens. But guess what? So for us, we are now the representations of Christ on the earth. Someone say, I am his, I am his man. I, if you're a lady, say, you're his woman. Tell the Lord right now. Say, you're, you're his. Oh, yes. People have maligned you, belittled you, oppressed you. Why did you allow it? From today. Let's stand on our feet. I want to pray. All right. Let's stand on our feet and lift our hands to the Lord. It's three minutes, two. I'm going to finish right on time. The Lord is amazing at bringing us into liberation. And that's what we need. Lift your hands, let's pray together. Shaka rabai salahashi to. Father, for the whole body of Christ, this is the prophetic word. Another prophetic word, one of many. That you want us to be your visionaries. You want us to do what you want us to do. And we need to start to get more faith built up in our heart and we command things to be the way they're supposed to be. And Father, I pray for people that the grace of heaven will come upon people, the Holy Ghost will come upon people to show them how wrong we've all been, all of us, all of us, from me to you to everybody, to ever allow circumstances to lead the way for us or to oppress us. We are the ones that are supposed to command things the way they're supposed to be they're not supposed to command things to be uh, for us. We're supposed to have dominion over things. Other things are not supposed to have dominion over us. Please get that. Please get that. In all that I've said here, I've said a lot. Please get that. We are supposed to command the way for ourselves according to the plan of God. Not the other way around. Nobody's supposed to tell us what level we're supposed to live at. Nobody's supposed to tell us what we're supposed to have or not have. We're supposed to get that from God. And we need to hear teachers that can take us higher, take us up. God, I feel the anointing here right now. The Holy Ghost is falling right here. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I receive this right now. The touch of fire, the touch of the anointing right now. Father, everybody watching and listening, wherever they are, touch them with your fire right now in the name of Jesus. And get out of the situations you're in. You're supposed to have dominion. And you're supposed to be respectful and you command respect. You show favor and honor to others, people will show favor and honor to you. You give generously, you'll be given too generously. Proverbs 11.25 says, A generous person will become like a well-watered garden. I think that's the New Living Translation. Wonderful translation. King James says it differently. But... Uh, a, a generous person will become like a well-watered garden. Your life will be a beautiful place of blessing and flourishing when you're giving out all the time. And that's the way you get ahead is by giving. You want to come out of lack, give your way out. You want to make sure you have a financial covenant intact with God for Him to bless you and open the windows of heaven. Pay your tithes. Be a tither. Be a giver. Work the system. Work the laws of God. But in your own life, in your own destiny, in your own way, you must act according to the plan and vision that God has. First, I pray prophetically that, Lord, you will show everybody what their gift and assignment is, exactly what it is they're supposed to be doing. 
from today they'll no longer be wondering about what to do. And then you begin to get fire, begin to command things to happen. You begin to command things to go the way you want. You begin to speak to the mountain and be removed. Anything in your way, you talk to it. Anything that's causing you problem and pain, speak to it. Fix it. We're called also to be problem solvers. And God will even raise up an anger in you. See, anger, people always think is so negative. But there's a positive side to anger. One positive side. It will make you change. It will make you change things. When you get mad about something, you say, this is because something is not right. You said, I must fix that. What disturbs you is a key to your assignment. What hurts you and makes you cry when you see it is something you're supposed to heal and solve. What you feel compassion for, how you, I feel the anointing of God so strong right now. When you feel compassion for a certain group of people or a certain situation when you see it, it's something you're supposed to work with. That's your part of your ministry. Now people, people don't care about everything. You can't be for the whole world. You have a specific assignment. What is it? If you were to be asked, what is it you're called to do? What is your gift, calling, and talent from God? You should be able to answer in a split second, in two or three sentences, or even one word, or two words, or a few sentences, what it is. I pray for everybody that they'll know exactly what it is the Father has ordained. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. You have a special treasure. You have special greatness in you. There's a special gift. There's a certain talent in you. What is it? Now you have to chart the course. Move everything out of the way that's wrong and move on and move ahead in Jesus' name. Let's clap to the Lord. Come on, really clap to the Lord. Come on, come on. Shout, 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 hallelujah. Yeah. All right. Receive, receive the grace of the Holy Ghost right now, the power of the Holy Ghost right now in new ways. Then everything will change for the better for you. I declare it so in Jesus' name. Well, we'll, we'll be back on live again in the next up, upcoming series of meetings and all that. God bless you, those that are watching online. Thank you for being a partner. You can do that. The ways to do are on the screen. God bless you. I want to thank our bishop here. Can we, can we clap our hands for the bishop? A mighty man and his wife, mama, and his precious wife. Wow. I, I love them. I, I love them. I feel it's a real divine connection. You know, when you're serious about the plan of God, God connects you with the right people. Yes? All right, I am Thomas Matthew the fourth. I love you. Can you blow me a kiss? Can I blow you one? Thank you. Oh, I feel it. Can we give Jesus one? Whoa, hallelujah. Give Jesus one. All right. Thank you. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent Prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.